In this video, I'm continuing the home improvement video series by installing new 6x6 porch columns. The existing columns are just turned 4x4s and they're starting to rot uh, toward the bottom. But they are the original columns to the house, which was built sometime in the 80s, I believe. In the previous home improvement video, the shutter video, I removed all of the railings that were attached to these columns. Uh, so I just removed all of them and I'll, I'll link that video in the description if you haven't seen it yet. But with these new columns, I started by giving them a good sanding and stained them the same color as the shutters. Well, actually, I used the wrong color at first. Uh, and it was more red than I wanted, so I sanded all of that off and started over with the stain and actually got it right the second time. But while, I, while that was drying, I went ahead and installed the column bases. Uh, the column bases keep the column off of the concrete, uh, allows water to flow under it instead of uh, making contact with the column, and so it just prevents rot in the future. And because I'm replacing the 4x4s with the 6x6s, I had to use a flush bottom base rather than a base with four legs. Uh, reason being is because the bigger post will hang off the porch a little bit, and if I were to use a base with four legs, uh, it would actually not sit level on the concrete with those other two legs hanging off of the porch. So that's why I'm using this type base. Uh, and then once I had them installed, the base is installed, I could take that measurement from the bottom of the base to where the top of the column was going to make contact with the overhang of the porch. And so this gave me a more accurate measurement. Cutting the 6x6s was a little bit tricky in the fact that they were cumbersome and I also had to flip each column to complete each cut. Uh, on a couple of them I had to flip it again to trim it up where I made the cut. Uh, this was probably the most crucial part of the entire project because if I cut any one column the wrong length it just wasn't going to work. So what I did it was I measured each existing column one by one and then transferred those measurements to the new column and then cut it. And this way I was sure to not cut one too short. Now when it came time to install the new column, uh, I first had to use a floor jack and a support post to jack up the, the porch. Now this support post I had to cut to a certain length uh, and that was just because I had to take in consideration the amount of or the distance from the floor up to where the support post was going to sit on the jack and the distance between that jack and where it was going to make contact with the overhang of the porch. Uh, everybody's situation is going to be a little bit different, but just make sure you jack up the porch just enough that that old column will move a little bit. And the way that I removed these columns was just cut the old column in half with a reciprocating saw. And I cut a little bit of the way through it, uh, and then I, I checked the support column just to make sure I didn't um, vibrate anything loose and just, just to double check because I am working on the corner of the post here. I mean, excuse me, the corner of the porch. So I don't want this thing to fall. So I made sure that everything was still secure and then I continued on with the rest of the cut. Now once I cut this old column in half, um, that gave me uh, plenty of wiggle room to go ahead and remove the remainder of that column and it just came out really, really easy. It was just a couple of nails holding this in place. So it just pulled out and then I had to remove a nail uh, with a hammer, which was not a big deal. Now watch this center column right here. Did you see that move? I'm jacking this up uh, enough to get this new column in place, but that previous column that I just installed moved a little bit. So I know that I was, that I'm jacking this up and you don't want to jack it up too high uh, and cause disruption in some of the you know the structure or, or the trusses or anything like that so it's just enough to get that new column in place uh, and so I just took my mallet and persuaded it just a little bit uh, and got it where I wanted it and then once I got it to where I thought it was good uh, I made sure it was level and 
I did this by a couple of different ways. Of course, I used a level, but I also walked around, like got some distance from away from the house and kind of lined up the, the edge of that post with the edge of the house to see if it was straight and looking at the other columns. So that's how I kind of lined everything up. And then once I got everything in place, I could let the jack down. Now, I also had to install two half columns. Taking the old columns off wasn't a big deal. I just had to pry it away from the wall, clean up where the paint had built up, and remove some of the nails. So it's not a big deal for that. Now, cutting the this last new column in half was a different story. Uh, I tried a couple different ways at first without any luck bef before deciding that the circular saw was just going to be my best bet. Uh, now, if I had a beam saw, that would have been my choice, but I didn't have one. Looking back on the project, I probably should have looked into uh, either renting one or just buying one because this was this was a job. Uh, I don't think I ever said what kind of wood I'm using, but I'm using uh, treated pine, and it was hard to cut. Uh, I guess because it's just the the mass there. Uh, and also being treated, it just made for a difficult cut with this circular saw. Uh, and especially since I was cutting lengthwise times two. So, but as you saw, I started I started by finding the center uh, of this of this column and then popping a chalk line, and that just gave me a line to follow with my circular saw. And then I flipped the column over and did the exact same thing. Now because my circular saw. Uh, couldn't cut to the middle of this column there was a little bit more material to cut to actually make two pieces um, so I had to finish it off somehow so I got a reciprocating saw and just went to town on it now I had to actually put a little bit a little bit of elbow grease into this uh, to actually get it cut all the way through with that reciprocating saw but I made it work it happened and so if I had to do it all over again, I would look for a different way to do this. I would probably look for a beam saw uh, or somebody with a, a pretty big band saw to help me cut this in two. Now, once I had the column into two pieces, I just cleaned it up with my electric planer uh, and that worked just fine. And so once I had that finished, I could cut this column to length. Uh, and so I wanted it off the ground just a little bit. So I left just a little bit off the off the floor because this is going to be screwed to the wall didn't, didn't need a uh, a column base here so i went ahead and started my screws into the column uh, and just made sure that i was going to be screwing into um, you know part of the framing or uh, part of the uh, structure of the house and not just siding uh, and so i've got this corner piece on my house that was solid wood so that's not going to be an issue here but i did use uh, I think three, three and a half inch screws just to be safe. Uh, and I used about six screws on this. So once I got the screws started into place, I held the column up on the wall and started one. And then that way, once I had one, I could pivot on that one screw, uh, get it level, and then just finish tacking it into place. So it went really, really easy, uh, easier than I expected. And it looked really, really good. I was very pleased with how the columns came out. I like the contrast with the color of the house and how well the shutters actually matched. Uh, I have a couple more projects coming up that will add even more curb appeal to the house. So be sure to subscribe and click that little bell icon to be notified of new videos. Also, I'll be adding landscaping soon. So let me know down in the comments if you'd like to see a video on that, even though there wouldn't be any woodworking involved. So please check out the links down in the description for the website article where I give you step-by-step -step information on this project. And as always, thanks for watching.